Are you guys ready to go? Good, right? Buenas tardes and bon tardi. Is that right? From anyone from Brazil. It's really nice to have a chance to talk to you guys, even though this is a little awkward for me. <laughs> so I hope you can get some ideas about teaching common everyone from your home with your students throughout this one hour session with me. Well, my name is Gianco. I'm from Build and Grow. I am pretty sure some of you already know my face, quite familiar, right? <laughs> so hopefully we can discuss the further ideas about the, your experience. And also as a publisher, we always take into consideration in this like unimaginable situation that we faced. So, if you have any suggestions or if you have any ideas or if you want us to cover any further areas with the common everyone, please leave a chat that <clears throat> when we plan the next webinar, we can take into consideration that. So let's get going. So today I'm going to talk about three main points throughout the, an hour with this. Sorry about that. I need to clear my voice a bit. <laughs> My excuse is 6.30 a.m. in Korea time, so probably that's why. <laughs> so first, I'm going to talk about the theory background of Common Everyone. And it's very good to understand how we build the course book and then also why we need this kind of theory when we teach this English to the students. And then after that, we're going to discuss about 101 for distance learning. Well, this seminar format is quite new to me. And then also same to you too, right? So you have to teach from home and then the resource is quite limited and you cannot see, you cannot touch your students. So you might feel very frustrated. So when you, especially when you are dealing with the younger learners, it's very like frustrating in that situation. So we're gonna talk about how we can like plan and then organize our classroom. And then after that, I'm going to go over one unit of Common Everyone. So we're gonna discuss about the resources and then also activities that you can do with it. So first we're gonna go into these four C's. Well, whenever publisher developed the course book, they stress out these four C's a lot, 21st century skill, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and creativity. Well, there must be a reason, right? So the main reason is we have this course book as a pillar of our course. That means through this one, yes, they gain speaking, listening, reading, and writing, but at the same time, they learn how to collaborate by communication. And also they learn how to communicate by collaboration. And to make a synergy effect out of it, they need to think critically about what they're doing. And also they need to use their creativity to deal with their like current like work. And at the same time, they can make a personal connection with what they already accomplished within the class. So they can use that in a real life setting. Well, when you think of these forces, yes, it's quite academic and then it's really essential skill for you to work great in your like job field. But at the same time, if you think about our current situation that we never expected before in this era, we can use these skills in a real life setting. As a teacher, well, you think about new communication way to collaborate through these webinars and then also like Zooming and then extra, and also your students too. Well, I'm not sure about Mexico situation, but in Korea, well, we start our school year in March. So that means from February, we suffered this like COVID-19 situation. So many of students, actually all of our students, they didn't go to school 
from January till this April something. So many of the students, they need to do their own study and also they need to adapt to their study skills through this like online teaching methodologies. So when you think about this new like situation that we faced, these forces, it's survival skills in this kind of error too. So there's a way why we stress out this one. But as I mentioned several times, I think it's been just two or three minutes since I started this webinar, I stressed out this weird situation a lot, right? Well, I was in Central South America in February to cover my agenda with Empressor. Well, I never expected that I'm going to see you guys in this kind of situation in April. I was so excited to go to Brazil, Peru in May, but voila, right? This is our situation. So in this setting, yes, we are thrown to this kind of new situation. But at the same time, we need to think about the way to adapt our teaching skills and then deliver our teaching to our students as much as we can. But in this situation, especially for language teachers, it's quite challenging. We all know our students, they don't learn just by reading a word or reading a sentence or just listening to the audio, right? So as a teacher, we're quite facilitators, right? In front of the students, we have to move our bodies a lot to make them understand the word meaning. And then we need to do the lots of visual aid for students to understand. And then also TPR, song and chant, extra. So those kind of methodologies are quite limited when this little like scare kind of format. So first, when you build up this online class, you need to think about the visual rules with your students. Yes, it's similar to the class rules, but at the same time, well, we are over here, but we cannot touch our students or see our students. So in this case, what you can do is make it really clear what you want them to do through over here. So first, if you want them to listen what you are talking about, you can point your fingers. See, right? This is the word that you have to focus on. After that, if you want them to listen to the audio, you can do monkey ears, right? So listen. And then after that, if you want them to repeat after you, then it's your turn. I'm going to listen. So through these motions, they understand clearly what you expect them to do. And then after that, you want them to make sure if they're ready with their materials. So sometimes you want them to have a piece of white paper and a pen in front of them, then show the materials ready, and then check if everyone has each one of them good and then after that well as i mentioned before like tpr is quite essential part of this the language teaching so in this case you have to be very creative to make them understand within this little scare format so if i plan a lesson for the younger learners i would do this finger things a lot, and also exaggerated facial expression. In that case, you can try to deliver the meaning to your students. And eyes on students. This is the similar to when we are in the classroom setting. If Jose over there could be very distracted, in that case, if you're in the classroom, you can walk to his area and then touch his shoulder, then I'm looking at you. And then I know what you are doing, right? But in this setting, 
it might not be possible. So if you just let them work and then you're talking to your dog and then your cat and then your son and then your daughters, then they could be quite distracted too. So in this setting, I'm watching you guys. So it's quite funny, but sometimes it works with your younger learners. So you can do this kind of gesture that you want them to do work and then Miss Ko is watching you. Mm, you're doing a good job. And then next one that I wanna stress out, encouragement and viewers. Yes, it's frustrating. Their work speed is gonna be slower, but what you can do is you can have a piece of white paper or I just bought a little light whiteboard and a marker. So you can write down their name and then star system. So whenever they do the volunteer and then whenever they finish their work within the time or whatever that you want them to do, then you can give them a little star viewers. So through this weird system and then encouragement, you can keep their attention and also they can speed up their work a bit. So after this new communication adaptation with your students, and then you need to think about the props that you might need during this online class setting. Well, our team was really creative to make this like our meeting room more like feasible for the classroom setting. Well, you can use the flash card or alphabet cards or any kind of animal pictures that you might have around this area. I know that it would be optimal for you to have this corner, but I understand that sometimes you just out of the classroom with just one week notice or a day notice. So you might not be able to have those like props in your classroom, then it is fine. Then you can find some quiet corner of your house that you can focus on this online teaching with your students, then it would be fine. Just find the somewhere it's very, very nice and then cozy. So your dog, cat, or your husband and your just kids, they're not gonna bother you while you're doing this. Okay, and then let's get going. Now we're gonna talk about, come on everyone over here. Well, when I think of like online class setting, I think Come On Everyone is one of the very nice books that you can use. Actually, if you look at teacher materials that comes with Come On Everyone, it has a very, very various aspect of it. So first, we provide the classroom PPT and also interactive whiteboard material. So if you look at this, uh, this is one of the examples of interactive whiteboard materials. As you know, it's all the audios and then song and chant videos, games, and also the flashcard. Everything is within this one city. So some of the teachers, they prefer to use this, this interactive whiteboard materials. And also, this is one of the examples of the PPT that we provide for the teachers. One of the great aspect of it, actually we provide all the warm-up activities and then word activities, and then we spread out each lesson for students and then for teachers to use for 45 and 40, 50 minutes, depends on their like class tag. So I met many teachers in Mexico who are really, who really likes this classroom PPT because sometimes, well, interactive whiteboard, yes, but not all like school has those luxurious, like the luxurious board in the classroom. So in that case, you can use the TV with the flash drive with this PPT. And also at the end of the book of Come On Everyone, we provide this like materials for the teachers and also for the students too. 
So especially when you're dealing with younger learners, you have those phobia that you have to cut everything for them and organize everything for them. But with this one, it's very easy to tear. And then also you can definitely invite parents to make sure that your students are ready with their materials. If you want them to practice a bit of writing in a free format, then you can ask parents that we're going to do the book one, unit three today. So they need to cut this little flashcard and then they need to place that in front of their computer. So it's not going to take them long to get ready when you want them to do the activities. And also like big piece of white paper and then pencil would be a really nice way for them to freely writing or drawing while you're doing it. So in that case, they can show their work in front of the computer so you can check if where they are too. So today I'm going to cover these five areas of the book. When we discuss about what we can do with this common everyone and then how we can model in front of the teachers when they struggling to build the online classes. I think most of the teachers, they have questions about how can they build those five areas within the lesson. So this is one of the examples that I can show you, but as I mentioned from the beginning of this webinar, well, we understand that you might have specific questions or worries or concerns why you're teaching common everyone from the home that means you can just leave that your worries concerns and then your problems then we're gonna just get everything together and then we're gonna have a short q a session when we finish this webinar and also if that's long like that needs the long explanation or the new like modeling then we're gonna think about the building another this webinars for you guys so is that clear good okay so well i'm gonna go over this one unit the common everyone book one and then unit three and we're gonna go over vocabulary practice and sentence practice song and chant story reading and then speaking test over here and then also i'm going to use classroom ppt so if you are already users and then oh that's a brand new to me and then you can just definitely talk to one of the academic consultants from Empressor. they can definitely provide those ppts for you guys so are you guys ready so words practice it's time to do the picture walk in this case we are gonna just expand what you can see in the book but in a just no distraction going on kind of format so here picture walk if you're worried about what i'm not sure about picture walk i don't know what i can say during my picture walk it's okay. <laughs> we are already providing it for you. So look at the picture. Wow. Ooh, amazing, right? The children are in the garden. What are those? Great, good. I already hear some sound about the apple, like they are pulling around. You can just listen what they're saying. Good. Oh, they are carrots, right? Carrots. Good, good. And they are onions. Onions. It's your turn to say. Good. Good job, guys. By doing that, I didn't say they are onions, right? So I just focus on the onions. So it might be challenging for them to see the whole sentence from the beginning. So 
just whenever you want them to repeat the words, point it. And then it's your turn to say it. And they're for potatoes. And look at this. Now we are going to find Ming. Boop, 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 boop. She must be Ming, right? Ming, Ming has an apple. Good. Let me see if I have an apple in front of me. Ooh, Miss Ko has one. Good job, guys. And now, now it's time to look at Tim and Kevin. Tim and Kevin, good. Tim has an orange. Tim has an orange, good. Your time to say it, good job. Now, Kevin has an banana, banana, good job. Your turn, good. You can lead your students to say it out loud in this way. And then if you want them to focus one by one, then you can unmute each student and then let them repeat about it too. So that's totally depends on how you want them to practice the words. So now we're gonna go to the flashcard activity. So this kind of flashcard activity you can definitely depends on your plan within the class. So sometimes I like to do flash cards activities in the beginning of the class for them to be familiar with the words, meanings, and then spellings and the sound. But at the same time, you can do a little fun game at the end of the classroom with this flash card. So here, now sorry that I need to Clear my voice a bit. <laughs> now, what we can do is we're going to look at the flashcard. So what the one of the good thing about this teacher PPT, well, flashcard is always engraved in. Yes, it would be very nice if you have this kind of flashcard ready at home. But sometimes, as I mentioned before, you didn't have time to get all your stuff from the school. It's totally understandable. So, and also instead of just showing the paper in front of them, if you share this PPT with your students, they're gonna have this big visual aid in front of them. So it would be much easier for you to get their attention too. So flashcards. Here, what is it? It's an apple. Apple, right? Good. Now it's time to listen, everyone. Ready to have this big ears to listen? Good job. Okay. Apple. Good. Now it's your turn to say it. Good. You did a great job. You can definitely do that with the, the, all the words that are provided. Well, if you're familiar with this, come on everyone. First part, you have six words and then one sentence set. And then second part, you have another six words and then one sentence set. So with this six words, you can definitely do it. And what I can do with my students since they have this little card, in front of them ready. So, ooh, this is on. Good. Can you find orange among your cards? Good job. You can definitely lead orange. your students in this way. Okay. And now it's a little expansion, personal connection to think about the fruits or vegetables that they love. In this way, they can remember further about the meanings as well. So what we are going to do, Ms. Ko is going to show one fruit, one vegetable each. If you like to eat them, then show me your one thumbs. Good. If you love them, it's okay to have a two thumbs. But uh, I'm not sure. I don't like the texture. I don't like the texture, the taste, then it's okay. 
one thumbs down. Oh, I can't even look at it. Then two thumbs down. It's up to you. So are you guys ready? What is it? It's on apple. Good. It's your turn to say apple. How many of you like an apple? Do you like it? Or good job, guys. You did the great job. Are you ready for the next one? Let's see. Ooh, I skipped the one. <laughs> so, carrot, how many of you like it? Hmm? Well, Lucero likes it, and then let's see, Anna likes it, right? Good job, guys. You did the awesome job. And then, as I mentioned before, if you want to do a little chart for them to participate, it would be a really nice idea so they can see, wow, I'm in board. I'm doing learning with my teachers over here too. Okay, so now next thing, well, we plug the games for the teachers too. And then originally we designed these activities for the whole class activities. So if you look at this, like, the procedures for you to do the games. Sometimes, oh, this might not be suitable in this online setting. In that case, you can simplify a bit of this game. So you can do one by one activities with your students. And also, well, I understand that younger ones, especially less than 11 year old, well, it might be a little hard to do the group work with your students. Well, they cannot see, touch their classmates. So it might not be very like feasible for them to do, oh, group work, so who do I talk to? Something like that. So in this case, what I can recommend, do it individually first. Like first two units, you can definitely do that. And then they get to know you, and then they get to know the procedures. And then kids are kids. They're amazing when it comes to this adaptability. Somehow they're much better than us sometimes. So once they are very familiar with this online setting classroom, then you can group your students and then do it in a way. And in that case, you, you don't want to unmute all of your students button at once. So if you want them to do the three at once, then just unmute those three students so they can talk to each other and then they can participate and then do another group and then extra. I understand that this might delay some time. So you can think wisely about the progress that you have to make during this time of the year <laughs> and then also the how you want to do plan this kind of activity so this one originally if i'm in the normal classroom i would do it in a big whiteboard with my students but in this case we plug the this into this little like the screens but at the same time your students still can see that so one of the really nice way for you to do it, but one, 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 <coughs> sorry, <coughs> unmute one students at a time in this case. So look at this, Miss Ko loves apples. So I have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 apples, it's all mine. But what we're going to do is, if we can guess what letter <gasps> comes in this each blank, we're gonna guess. You don't need to worry about the alphabet that you're going to provide. Everything is over here. So choose either one of them and then Say it out loud. We're gonna start from the first over here. But before we get into do it, do you remember all the words that we learned today, right? And then 
if your students are not quite there yet with the alphabet, then definitely you can preview your words with your students. And sometimes they get confused with the spelling, then you can provide the words over here. And if that takes too much time during the classroom, then I can definitely recommend these activities that you can do at the end of the whole unit. In this case, well, they are already familiar with the words and then spelling, so you don't need to struggle too much about this. So let's try to do it. Since Zoom has this amazing drawing feature, so let's look at the first one over here. Hmm, interesting. One, two, three, four, five letters. Hmm, is there anyone who wanna do it? I think Alejandra just joined us, right? So Alejandra, can you say that? Well, we're gonna just mimi. <laughs> so, well, yes, she said, hey, good job, right? So I'm going to put A over here. So you already got the right answer. So you're not, you're going to get one of these apples over here. Alejandra gets one apples over here. And let's look at this. Ap mm, what is it? I saw Lucero was nodding her head, right? So Lucero, can you say that? Good. P, amazing. Good job. So like Alejandra, Lucero's gonna go get one apples, right? And let's see who's ready. Jose, are you ready? Okay, good, Jose. Can you say that? See? Mm. Is that right? Let's think once more. Oh, good job. Now, amazing. You all did a great job. And then Alejandra, Lucero, Jose, you all get one apple each. Awesome. It's really nice to have them all be aware of those spellings too, right? So that's one of it. Good job. And then I'm going to erase this all <laughs> for next slide. Okay, good. Now let's get going. So now, good job. You already did a great job. Apple, apple. Apple. Good. Now we're going to go into this sentence practice next. So here, well, kids are quite visual learners. So if you provide, for example, no, it isn't, they might be familiar with is not, but isn't is not quite easy format for them. So one of our editors does is try to visualize the sentence structure for the students. So, is not, is not, right? But, oh, look at this. Oh, is going somewhere. Oops, sorry. So, oh, is going. <laughs> sorry. Oh, is going somewhere, and then it became isn't. Good job. So whenever you want them to be familiar with these, the format, you can show the who is going somewhere. It could be very useful for them to remember. Oh, it's not all going somewhere and it isn't. Okay, good job, guys. And let's look at this. Now it's time to practice this and then First, they can look at the picture that are given. So even though, yes, that's A versus B kind of practice, but it's a little stink outside of the box. So you are give, you're giving them a picture of it, and then they think, and then 
they're gonna go to the, the answer first. Oh, yes, it is. That means <gasps> someone asked if that is an apple, right? So make them be aware of that process by modeling them. Oh, look at this, what is it? Apple, good. Now, whether this one, yes, it is. That means, is it an apple? Good, you did a great job. And then let's look at the next one. That is, no, it isn't. That means, mm, someone doesn't know this is a carrot, right? This is a carrot. But, oh, that means, except carrot, I can ask anything. So let's look at this. Oh, ooh, you can use this word or that word. Well, we have really many choices, right? So is it a potato? No, it isn't, right? So you can make them practice uh, this one. Well, what I can suggest, you can model like one by one and then do the pair work or teacher versus students students versus teachers you can be creative in that way too okay now this is really nice activities for you to do with your students but at the beginning oh it doesn't have any instruction and also oh it's quite hard for your students that's why you need to model them before they listen and then do the practice. So first, wow, there are many bags in front of it, right? Can you count? One, two, three, four, five, six bags. Within this six bag, you're gonna find, oh, what is this? Carrot, good. And what is this? Potato, good job. And extra. So you're going to find six fruits and vegetables. So Miss Ko is going to open one of these back. Ooh, is it a carrot? Can you go down over there? <gasps> Yes, it is, right? And then let's look at number two. Is it an apple? Mm, no, what is it? Potato, so no, it isn't. Good job. Now, number three. Oh, is it an orange? Okay, let's follow this line. Oh, yes, it is. These, right? Now, number four, five, and six. So do the modeling first, and then you can let them do the pair work. Well, if they're not quite sure to do the pair work, then I would definitely read the question. Is it a carrot? And then student, they need to follow it. And then, oh, yes, it is, right? And then after that, they can isn't. Oops. See. Okay, sorry. <laughs> See. <coughs> Ask and answer. Is it a carrot? Yes, it is. Is it a carrot? No, it isn't. Is it an apple? Yes, it is. Is it an apple? No, it isn't. <coughs> isn't. Is not. See. Ask and answer. Is it a carrot? Yes, it is. Is it a carrot? No, it isn't. Is it an apple? With yes, it is. <laughs> With this audio, actually, you can do it after you they finish everything, and also they can do the shadow like speaking with this audio clip too. 
one sentence and then you pause and then let them say it. So that would be kind of the nice wrap up activities when they finish this. And let's get going. So this is one of the practice. As I mentioned, yes, that's a repetition, but we want them to think. And also it's not quite like dull format, like A, B, they repeat all over the again. So once again, this is the picture. So you're going to give the two different answer sets. So first, is it an orange? <gasps> what is this everyone? Good, an orange, right? So that means, yes, it is. Good job. Well done. And then if someone says it, no, it isn't. It looks like a potato. Oh, oops. Let's look at this. Yes, this is an orange. Good job, guys. And this is the same format as it is. So after they this, they can memorize the all the words and then sentence and then you can let them play it once again we develop this game for the whole class activity but at the same time you can definitely do it in this little screen so in this game you're gonna give them this six words that they learn but the thing is they need to remember where they are too so if you get rid of one of these, they need to remember what it is by asking the question. But the thing is, these first graders, they're, I like to say that, mini human beings. So sometimes they are not quite sure and they need to see the visual aid and extra. So what I like to do, I lead them to list the words that they have in front of them. So first, mm, let's look at this. First, I want you to put the potatoes on top of it and then oranges next to and apples, good job, and bananas. Onions and this carrot. Good. Now they have this sample in front of them. So this is a cheat sheet for them. So you can boost their confidence a bit. And then also sometimes you have low level of students. In that case, you can definitely have them. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I think the room is quite dry. <laughs> So now, good. So first, what what was in this spot? Is it a banana? Oh no, right? Is it an onion? No, right? Oh, the Michelle says it's. Is it a potato? Yes, it is. Right. Good job. So you can definitely do these activities within this online class setting with your students. Okay, now, now we're gonna go to this song and chant session. And I'm a big fan of move your body around kind of teacher when you teach song and chant because when they do the, the chant and then sing a song with their body movement, they you really remember further with what they have already have. But the thing is, we only have these sessions over here. So you can utilize definitely this little cards in front of them. So since this is quite fast to chant, so you cannot make them pick all the cards at once. So I'm gonna assign each one of you a card. So my banana group is gonna be three over here. My onion group is over there. And my potato carrot group over here. So you assign them to have those cards ready. So whenever they say the card, they wave this card. So in this way, you can 
make them memorize the words and then focus on those words while they are doing a chanting. And also at the same time, we learn the word, the sen uh, we learn the sentence structure, which is it isn't, right? In that case, we learn that it's the same as is not, but O is going somewhere. So whenever they see that sentence structure, you want them to remember, then whenever they see isn't, they can do the this little circus going to the Caribbean to have fun. So you can lead your students as you wish. So song and chant, it's definitely fun to refresh their like this environment, but at the same time, you can make them focus on either words or sentence structure or like punctuation as you wish. So let's listen a bit and let's see, let's assume that if you're from Mexico, then your banana group, I know that Mexico has really nice bananas all the countries actually especially in Centro South America and my El Salvador group is gonna be onion and then my Bolivia group is gonna be carrot and then my Brazil is gonna be an apple and then my let's see Ecuador fellows you're on the orange and let's see what else left Peru your potatoes. <laughs> so if I miss any one of you, I'm sorry, that's not my intent. So I know that you guys are quite good at moving your body around. If you're not, if you don't have this card, it's okay. Just shape and then move your body a bit while you're listening to this chant. Ready? Go. <laughs> I cannot see you <laughs> or touch you, I still can feel that you guys are dancing. <laughs> okay, good. Now we're going to go to this story reading session. So the basically, they need to listen to the story. But even though they're in the classroom, it's very hard to get their attention while you're playing the audio. So it's always recommendable for you to give them some task while they're listening to the CD. So in this case, it's simple movement, point at Rosa, Nick, when they're talking. So you play the audio, and then make sure that they are moving their fingers around. So in this case, you can definitely do, I'm watching you guys. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, oh, Luis is not moving his fingers, mm -mm, right? So you can definitely make them involve these activities. So they look at the sentence structure, but at the same time, they learn about this dialogue format too. So. Lesson three, story. A, listen, then act it out. Mom, this is my friend, Nick. Nick. Hello, Mrs. Rios. Ooh, Nick. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Let's make some food. Okay. So you can do it or 
as the direction says, you can act out. And you can just make them stand up too. I know that this is camera in front of you, but they can stand while you just want your female students to be a Rosa and the male students be a Nick, as you wish. So the main focus over here, yes, they listen to the audio, but at the same time, give them some task to focus on. So you are not gonna lose your students' interest. And over here too. So they're gonna practice one line by one line over here. So in this case, yes, they're gonna say the sentence out loud and then repeat after you or you repeat the sentence first and then you can just make them do it. And then also you can check individual students' fluencies by kind of assign each student to whatever line that they want to do. In this case, less of the students, you can make them act out. It would be a really nice kind of refreshment. And then also they can get on this task with one student who has to say a sentence out loud. So that's one of the ideas. And this combined all this one set, act to the story out, yes. But at the same time, they need to practice this each words too. So either you can do the, the reading part first and then they get familiar with the sentence structure and then they can just act out while they're practicing by pair or like as a group as you wish. Good. And as I mentioned from the beginning, we have these materials at the end of the book. So yes, it might be challenging for you to lead them since you're not in the classroom, but you can do one by one with your students. After that, they can have their own like personalized story and then they can read that to their to, to the pairs or to the whole class, or you can assign one or two students to speak up. It depends on the time limit that you have and then speed up the class that you have. Good. Now speaking task. Well, it's a really nice wrap up activities. Uh, they actually practice what they learn, but in a totally different setting, not classroom like a setting. So originally this speaking task, they need to put this over here and then ask a question without looking at this picture on their forehead. But in this camera setting, it's not possible. So our editors, we got all together and then we kind of discussed what we could do with this kind of online setting. And we think it's a good idea to use the, the other side. So ask them to place all the cards with this, the letter up. And then after that, it's gonna be a spy game. Well, Miss Ko, now I'm not gonna see my card and then show that to my classmate. <clears throat> now, I don't know what it is. So, is it a potato? No? Okay. Is it an apple? No? Mm. Is it a carrot? Good, right? So now, here, Miss Ko, ask three questions before she get the answers. Okay, good. But Ran get two questions before she got it. So you can just play with this kind of a little modification in this kind of setting. Okay, good. And well, well, I think it's quite a lot to cover just on the hour, but I just want to wrap up with all this like 50 minute talking about come on everyone with the one comment. Well, we never expected none of us were going to be in this kind of situation in 2020 April, right? But things happened and then we need to modify what we are doing to this little like screen format. But 
yes, it's challenging. And also, before, if we have like 100% work, like, like accomplishment, this might be with our students, we can start from 70s to 80s. But what you're doing is amazing, the, attending these webinars and then think about the way that you can communicate with your students. So I want you to talk to you that it's okay, that it can be perfect at the beginning, but we're gonna do it throughout the time that we're gonna deal with this kind of situation. So, well, once again, I had a great time with you guys. I really wish that I could have seen all of your faces over here. But since we have like 100 participants over here, it might not be possible for me to see this PPT. But well, from now on, I'm going to talk to the team to think about what we can do with the quick Q&A. And then after that, we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A session. And then if it gets longer, then definitely we're going to plan another webinar for you to do it. So just wait for us like for a few minutes, then we'll come back. Thank you a lot, everyone. Amazing. Thanks.